Hi, I'm Josh Cadillac, and welcome to my podcast, Know Your Shit. I've been blessed to see great success, as well as seeing the bottom up close and personal in 2008. And if there's one lesson I've learned is that if you want to have success and differentiate yourself from everyone else out there, you need to know your shit. As a successful real estate and crypto investor and an educator, it drives me insane that people do not immerse themselves in their craft. Everyone is so busy advertising and testing new sales techniques, they forget the most important thing, the product. Here I wanna to talk to the folks that got this right. The most successful people in the world in every industry, bring them to you and find out what they learned in their business that made it great. When you're listening to my podcast, you will know for sure that the topics and experts we have on have one thing in common. They know their shit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Know Your Shit podcast, where our knowledge and pride in what we do drives us to be excellent. My name is Josh Cadillac, and I'll be in the driver's seat for today's show as we strive to, start, to learn how to stop doing just deals and start closing for life we got a great show for you today, and I want to introduce a really awesome guest. I had the privilege of being on his podcast the other day, Mr. Rob Stide. Rob, thanks for being here, buddy. My pleasure, Josh. It's an honor to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome. My pleasure, man. So, Rob, why don't you start off by telling us, what is it you do, man? Yeah. So, I'm a multi-business owning entrepreneur uh, that has really kind of cracked the code to figuring out how to launch businesses successfully using same exact framework, same principles for every business. Uh, primarily right now, my focus is in real estate. I'm a residential real estate agent here in Austin, Texas. I have an incredible team, sales courses, coaching. Uh, I'm also a bodybuilder, and I also have a business of music composition and publishing. Nice. So what got you started doing all that, Rob? Man, uh, you know, my dad always set a really incredible example for me growing up uh, in real estate. And my earliest memories are of him saying, work for yourself. Don't work for somebody else. Um, it, my first business started when I was getting my master's degree in education. And I realized that I don't want to teach public school for the, for the rest of my life. You know, I like teaching just like you do. I know you teach a lot of agents and coach a lot of agents and speak a lot. Um, and I still love teaching. I still do it every day, but I, I knew I didn't want to teach public school forever. That was really my catalyst to launching my first business, which took eight years to do of just grit and hard work and figuring it out. Because in that in that music industry of writing competitive marching band music, uh, there's not really a blueprint for that as there is with real estate and so many other things. So that one kind of had to figure out. Um, but I did get some great tips from, from really helpful people. And then uh, the real estate thing came from, again, my father, who I said a great example for me, got involved in real estate investing with him and realized that the real power of it and all of the, I mean, the endless possibilities of it. And so sure. when my wife and I moved here to Austin, we uh, burned the docks. She quit her teaching job. She was still teaching and we got started in real estate here. And it, it's led us to a quality of life that I never really could have imagined. And I, I'm just loving where we're at. And we have bigger, bigger goals now that we're always striving for. Love it, man. Love it. So what do you think was it about uh, about teaching public school that was just kind of a, you know, don't think I want to do it? Um, man, it's it's a grind day in and day out of the same. It's like Groundhog Day, dude. I mean, yeah. I think most people have seen that movie. It's just literally the same stuff every single day. Um, I like being rewarded for my hard work. Yeah, I like yeah. feeling like I have some influence and, you know, no matter if I tried my best or completely went in, checked out. My compensation doesn't change dealing with people's ungrateful kids and ungrateful parents. Yep. And, and honestly, man, being, uh, being a music teacher, um, it was challenging, you know, because the reality is as much as, as teachers, we tell our kids like to be kind to each other, inspect for each other and not to bully each other. Dude, teachers do the same shit in the teacher's lounge, man. I was yeah. told to my face, Rob, you're the bottom of the totem pole as the band teacher. Keep in mind, I have a skill set no one else has, right? Mm -hmm. I could go in with sub plans and teach their class. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They can't come in with sub plans and teach my class. They can't play mm -hmm. every instrument known to mankind the way I can. But, um, you know, it was just dealing with those other teachers. It was toxic. You know, they complain about their job every day. They don't do anything about it. Um, and I was like, man, this is not, <laughs> this is not the life for me. It's just no way I can't do it. Isn't there an interesting thing about that, that misery factor? Like there's, there's a certain amount of misery that every human being will kind of like 
maintain until they get miserable enough. Like it gets over yeah. certain, th- and then they'll actually do something about it. Yeah. And, and most people live in that 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 line just below that threshold of actually doing anything to change the thing that they complain about. It it, it fascinates me. Yeah. You know, and, and most people are just too scared to to do anything about it, and they'd rather leave on those golden handcuffs. I mean, I remember the day I told all of my coworkers and my principal that I was quitting teaching. By that point, I had built my my music composition business. I was making about fit, mid 50s a year as a teacher. I built my music composition business to about 150,000 a year. After I quit, I rapidly scaled it to about a quarter million dollars a year consistently. And I remember telling them I'm quitting to work my music business full time. And the amount of pushback I got was unbelievable. Keep in mind, no one asked me, what do you do? How much money are you making? They just said, that's terrible. How could you do that? Like, I would never do that. Rob, you're tenured. You've got pension. Why on earth would you do this? It's so like they, they couldn't understand it. They would, they'll complain every day, but they just couldn't understand because the reality is they can't imagine themselves doing it. So they try to, to pull you down when you try to go do something great. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you've experienced that too, along the way. Well, there's, especially, especially amongst academia, there's a very risk averse culture. Yes. Um, It, it it very much attracts people that are, that are in favor of, Hey, look, I'll always have a job. And like, it's good. I can complain about it nonstop, right? And, but I could, I'll always have that kind of safety cushion. Yeah. And so the kind of people that that get things done are the ones that take and, and push and the amount of pushback. I mean, there's there's one particular chat I'm on. And whether you love the guy or hate the guy, there's one guy on there that just absolutely hates Elon Musk and think he's an overrated idiot. Mm. And I'm like, but the guy's an academic. And like he, he's just wait, he's just hoping and praying for this guy to fail. Not gonna. And I'm happen. like, why to justify the fact that you haven't done anything else with your life? I mean, how does right. that make it any better? You know, right? <laughs> and so right. Th- there's kind of this this jealousy sort of thing that exists that's just unhealthy for people, and, and it's a trap. And, I, and the reason why I even bring it up is it's it's such a trap that people fall into that they're they're jealous of other people they criticize, and in some way the criticism kind of has the built-in excuse why you haven't achieved as much. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And people will love to criticize. And really, they're just projecting. They're projecting their own fear onto you know the subject because they just can't imagine themselves taking that risk or taking control or doing something scary. And obviously, being an entrepreneur is like the scariest thing you could possibly oh do God. when you're launching something, oh my which God. is why it's so important to get that that blueprint, which is kind of the cornerstone of everything I, I teach. Um, but, you know, I mean, at some point, I mean, I mean, the world needs teachers. The world needs those people to yep. do those jobs. But, man, I, I I realized very quickly, like, I ain't one of them, man. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. my brother's a teacher as well. And I mean, I, yeah. I, I get it. I mean, like, uh, I have to throw that out there with it because I like and I like my brother, too. I mean, he's he's a great guy. <laughs> <Hope> uh, <so. laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's it's not that I'm throwing academia under the bus, but it's one of those things. My, my father always kind of gave me that that idea that, hey, look, you got to be careful wearing one set of goggles because you can become blind to everything else. Yeah, completely. So like if I'm going to go into that culture, I need to recognize what that culture is, is good at and what it's good for. Yeah. And I also have to be aware of what that culture is going to take and, and push me in a direction of that maybe isn't where I want to go. Yeah. You know, taking that responsibility for yourself and your own mindset and how your, your surroundings and who you surround yourself with can affect that mindset. It's an important thing. It's, it's an important responsibility we have. Otherwise, you wind up as we talked about when I was on your podcast, the idea of being the in the passenger seat of your own life, kind of being yeah. a victim your whole life. Yeah. And, so- and and I realized as soon as I got into, you know, when I started my music business, um, there's not as much uh, of like an entrepreneurial community within mm-hmm. that industry. I mean, writing competitive marching band music, which is my my passion and, and my first business, it's a very, very niche thing. I mean, there's probably, I can probably count on two hands, the number of people that like make a living doing that. Um, and so there's not a huge community around it. But when I got into real estate and I started going to conferences and events, which I'm completely addicted to now, by the way, because once you're sur- surrounded by so many like-minded, supportive people, you know, I went from being in a, a school of, of teachers where they say, how could you do this? That's the worst idea ever to being around entrepreneurs who are all super successful, super wealthy. And you tell them what you're trying to do and they go, that's amazing. How can I help you? I've done that. You're going to crush it. Let's strategize. I mean, it's so empowering and addicting to be around those kind of people. And you have to surround yourself with those kind of people to realize what's possible and to continue to learn. Because if you're trying to get to that level, how are you going to do it? 
unless you surround yourself with that experience of people who have who have actually accomplished that. And so I agree with you, man. You you gotta you gotta surround yourself in that community to really separate yourself because if you don't separate yourself and kind of cut the dead weight of those people holding you down, it, it's always gonna hold you back. Absolutely, and, and it's 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 self perpetuating. It, it's a it's got a, it's a black hole. It, it kind of yeah. just continues to suck you in and hold you back. Yeah. And, and many people that are there probably could go a lot further if it wasn't for the community that they've that that they've surrounded themselves with. So it's a thing. Yeah. So where do you think all the success came from for you, Rob? Man, I mean, I, I think a lot of I get that question a lot simply because I've have numerous aspects of my life that have become successful that are not really related, like composing marching band music, bodybuilding, selling houses, coaching entrepreneurs. None of none of those things are really related to each other. But um, I think first and foremost, a lot of it is is just grit and hard work. And that might not be the answer <laughs> people want. I think they want this like magic fairy dust yeah. of, of uh, man, I just did this, that, and the other, and it all came together. And, you know, we've all seen that graph of like what people think success looks like and what it really looks like. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. really quite a roller coaster ride, but uh, it's, it's, it's simply, you know, aligning with the right people that I can learn from and just working relentlessly hard. I mean, doing more things in a shorter amount of time than most people are willing to do. You know, uh, we talked on my podcast when you were on and we talked about some of our favorite books and I said, be obsessed or be average by Grant Cardone. You know, he's, he's, uh, I'm such an admirer of Grant Cardone, massive action. I relate to that because that's really what it takes. And I think massive action is always the answer to any problem that you have. And I've just been willing to have delayed gratification and take massive action for things that I want. And I just don't stop until I get it. I'm willing to fail faster than most are willing to do. I'm willing to move faster and make mistakes quicker. Um, but I also have innately just a lot of delayed gratification, which is kind of in short supply in society today, oh, yeah. I think of working really hard now for something I may not realize for years until it comes to fruition. But I have faith in myself and my work ethic that as long as I don't stop and I'm following my own process, um, I'm going to get what I want. And mm -hmm. it's been quite interesting to see if I, as I've perfected this framework, like launching my music business took about eight years Mm -hmm. to do until I could really, really create sustainable income and scale it. Uh, bodybuilding took about half that time of getting in the gym and just ravenously reading and researching and applying and then hiring a coach. Real estate took even half that time. I mean, within my first year of real estate, I made over six figures and I've been doubling my income every year since then by simply applying what I learned, hiring a coach from day one and just moving as fast as possible. Um, what, when people engage in a new thing, especially entrepreneurship, there's this, this attitude of like, I'm just going to try it myself. I'm just going to do my thing. I'm going to do this my way. And that is the worst. That is the worst approach you could have. Absolutely. I mean, when you're, you're trying to do something, you have zero skill and experience in, you need a teacher. You need someone to teach you that has that experience doing it. I mean, I, I interviewed a guy that wanted to join my real estate team last week and he wanted all the benefits of being on the team. He wanted, um, you know, getting leads were really appointment to him. So on my team, we actually use a service called Whitley, which does our lead generation and schedules qualified appointments for my agents. So he wanted that. He wanted the money. He wanted the benefits. But when we started talking about my expectations of my team members, like, all right, well, you're going to have to use our scripts. I don't want to use scripts. They're not personal enough. You got a cold call. I don't do cold calling. It's not personal enough. Well, you got to follow the systems, man. I don't want, I don't want to follow, you know, I'm going to do it my way. And I'm like, dude, you have no way you have made $0. You got your license like a few weeks ago. Like you don't know what you're doing. And that's what so many people want. They say, I want the rewards, but I'm not willing to take the time to learn and pay my dues and just learn the you process. Mean, you, you mean that people have a problem with delayed gratification? You, you, <laughs> you, you're, you're kidding me. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, you're right. It, it makes you an absolute outlier. My father used to tell me all the time, son, you have two choices in life. You can be the person that makes all the dumb mistakes for yourself. Or you can learn from other people's mistakes, your yep. choice. Yep. And so why wouldn't I learn from other people's mistakes? Yep. Uh, I mean, the, the, the thing that really scares me most about this, especially with real estate, is people coming in thinking that they're going to do it their way. They have yep. no idea what the hell they're doing. And yep. they're helping people make the most expensive transaction those people are ever going to make in their life. You make a mistake. You cost people thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. That's right. Because you don't know what the hell you're doing. It, it's it, 
it's it's unconscionable, but people are so wrapped up. It's such a selfish society that we live in that they're just all about themselves yeah. and, and to their own detriment. They think too much of themselves yeah. as opposed to having that humility to sit there and say, hey, look, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, they think they're owed something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, social media, I think, is a huge proponent of that these days. I mean, social media can be very powerful, can be extremely powerful, can do a lot of good. But it's also a, a very responsible, I think, for this type of instant gratification that we've become sure. so used to. I mean, humans in general want instant gratification. Before social media, people have always wanted that. And, and yeah, social media has made it and, and technology has made it so much easier. And entrepreneurs in general um, also kind of help perpetuate like like for me, like I'll do lives or YouTube videos in equal proportion to like, here are the struggles I'm dealing with today. Like, let me like take you behind the scenes into the kitchen of what it's really like to own multiple businesses and be an entrepreneur all day. I mean, I did one a couple of weeks ago. I had like one of the hardest days of my career where I just kept getting hit and hit and hit yep. and just didn't want, I just wanted to crawl into a hole, man. But you know what? I did my thing. I got my mindset together and I just psyched myself up and I stayed in the office until 11 o'clock at night until I got it done. It. But especially in, in our real industry and real estate as an example, people always post the picture with the big key at the title company and how much money they made in this house. But they're but what they're not showing is the realities of the stresses that we feel all the how time many, and the 60 hour work weeks that we have to yeah. put in sometimes. And, yeah. and, and entrepreneurs only like to post the good because they want to give this impression like they're only successful. Mm -hmm. But the reality is anyone that's achieving success has failed way more times than most. And because that's not as publicly out there, a lot of new agents or new entrepreneurs think, well, I'm just going to start this business and it's just going to be great. And I'm going to make all the money and it's only going to take a couple months. And that's just not how it is. That's not the reality. The success is almost the outlier. It's the, it's the tremendous yeah. amount of effort and work. There's, there's the failures outnumber the successes. There's oh, no easily. Ways of, I mean, any no industry, I mean, Real estate, over 80% of agents are going to drop out within the first couple of years. Out of the agents that keep going, they're only going to close an average of three to five deals a year. Uh, when you're looking at entrepreneurs in general, I mean, the vast majority of small businesses fail because they are, they're not willing to do the work. They're not willing to put in the time. They, they don't have a strategy. They just kind of barrel into it. Um, and they're just not willing to get that delayed gratification of putting in the work now to get what you want in the future. Yeah, no, I mean, I've had people, the weightlifting thing, people come and say, oh, man, you got a great back. What's the secret? The secret is about 10,000 sets of back in the last yeah. you know, 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's a secret. <laughs> a yep. lot of pull-ups, what can yep. I tell you? Yeah, man. I mean, anytime I'm getting ready for a show and people, you know, see the the, the eight-pack at 5% body fat, and they're like, bro, how do you do that? It's like, in the kitchen. Yeah, I brought Egg my whites. cooler to my friend's wedding last week. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> yeah, the lot for the last three weeks, I haven't been able to hold a steady conversation because I got so little body fat in my brain, my neurons right. can't exactly. fire right. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, I remember when I was dieting down for combat. That was the biggest problem I had. I couldn't think straight. If you get no, like, the brain fog, it's a real thing, man. <laughs> it's a thing, man. I, I had yeah. like three lines I would go to, and I just cycle back between the three lines. And I'd say, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, way to go! That's great. And like, oh, it was it was yeah. brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. But again. Delayed gratification, man. I was looking forward to that that hamburger when it was all said and done. I can't, yeah. can't tell you. Big bowl yep. of pasta. And you know, the, 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 the further your goal is, the more delayed gratification you have to flex. And it yeah. is a muscle that you can develop. I mean, just like some people genetically have more, you know, better um, strength areas and muscle development or strength, delayed gratification is the same. You know, I talk all the time about the Stanford marshmallow experiment yep. uh, conducted at, at Stanford University when these scientists took little kids and they put a marshmallow in front of them. And they said, okay, kid, you got 15 minutes now. You can eat this marshmallow right now and you're done and you can leave. Or I'm going to come back in 15 minutes. And if this marshmallow is still here, you're actually going to get two marshmallows. You're going to get another one. So mm -hmm. you can have one now or wait 15 minutes and, and, and get two. Mm -hmm. And it was quite interesting because, you know, there was a, a variety of, of results. Some kids had no problem. Like I would have been one of those kids. That's like, no problem. I'll wait and get two. Yeah. Um, I don't like marshmallows. I would have been like, can I have cookies instead? If so, I'm down, you know, yeah. uh, some kids waited a few minutes and couldn't last some kids, you know, before the scientists were even finished explaining what the rules were, they were just like, boom, I'm done. Yeah. Um, Let's get out and of here. it was, it was quite interesting because they, they tracked the results over decades. Yep. And what they found was that the, the, the kids that had better innate delayed gratification were better at life Yep. in all aspects. They got further in their education. Uh, they made more money 
They did better financially. They were healthier. They had better body mass index. Yep. They were more emotionally stable. Like they were literally better at all aspects of life. Now, delayed gratification, just like all muscles, if you're underdeveloped there, you can work it. You can get better at it. But what most don't realize is that the further your goal is, the more delayed gratification you need, right? If if someone came up to you or I and said, I want you to help me make another $1,000 a year, that's easy to do. We could probably give them that knowledge in, in a minute. Yeah. on how to do that. It's not going to take a lot of delayed gratification to do that. If someone comes to me that just gets their license and says, I want you to help me launch my career to a point of making at least you know $200,000 a year to sustainable income. Cool. I can definitely do that. I've done that myself. Right. But that's going to take a lot of, like, you're not even close to that right now. Yep. So that's going to take a lot of work and a lot of delayed gratification. And what people want is that they have this vision for themselves of what they want, but they don't realize, well, I'm not even close to that. So it's going to take years until I reach that. And if only they would hang in and get the blueprint, which they're just not willing to do. Yep. No, I mean, I, I 100% when I, when 2008 happened, I lost everything I had to take and build it all back. Yep. I did uh, six years of penance in a Chevy cruise coming from a Corvette. Mm. Um, mm. That, that doesn't seem like it's that bad for people that are not car people. But if you're a car person, you understand my pain. Yeah. yeah. Um, or if you get used to achieving a certain quality of life an income for yourself and you have to dramatically step down. Like, yeah, that's a, that's a change. Well, I mean, more than that, I was dating a gal from, uh, from Venezuela and she had rented out two bedrooms in her house and she had a big, a major job. I mean, mm. super successful lady. And I, but why are you doing this? Why wouldn't I? They're, they're just sitting there doing nothing. And I thought to myself, you're absolutely right. I rented yeah. out my back bedroom, had somebody taken up half the lot. I didn't need, I was, I was making six figures a year, but I was like, yeah. why wouldn't I do this? Sure. And built everything again, just went through this six year period of extreme delayed gratification. Yeah. 50, 60 properties I added to the portfolio from nothing wow. and built it all back. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, every nickel, every penny had a scrounge and scrape. I mean, the other day I'm at the airport and I mean, now I'm at a place where, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a lot. I'm doing really well. And they're like, offer me an upgrade from the car. I'm like kicking myself. Like, I really shouldn't do this. You know, like I'm almost <laughs> afraid to let the monster back out again. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> But it's a thing because, you know, this, yeah. this, this ongoing war with ourselves is something that can't be understated. That delayed gratification thing, it is a daily grind and you build the yeah. muscle and it gets easier. It gets easier to avoid the cookies in the cupboard. Right. Um, right. And I think a lot of uh, another misconception is, you know, when you're talking about, I mean, it is, a, it is every day we have to flex that muscle. Um, and we have to have that discipline and entrepreneurs of all levels have that regardless of, of the level of success that, that you achieve. And, um, I mean, I, I read a lot. I know you read a lot, uh, the entrepreneur Roller Coaster by Darren Hardy is such a great book. It's required reading for anyone I coach. And I read that book once a quarter, just like be obsessed or be average. And I always get something different out of it. And one of the things that Darren Hardy talks about is this misconception that entrepreneurs are always so passionate. Again, I think that comes a lot from social media where, oh, my heart is full of this. And I hate that phrase, by the way. I just yeah. can't stand that. But like this, this whole, like, we're just, we just spend 24 seven, just uh, ultimately fulfilled from our toes to our nose and our soul. And it's like, it, it doesn't work that way. You need to be passionate about why you're yeah. doing what you're doing, but you're not always going to be passionate about what you are doing, right? As an example, I'm, I'm doing a speaking tour in all the major markets of Texas right now for, for real estate, right? We hit Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston. It is grinding to do all that. It is grueling to make all of these presentations, to put the content together for the workbooks, to follow up with the people that attend, to offer value, right? The best part is the speaking. When I'm actually in front of these people and getting to motivate them and help them and add value to them, that is about 10% of what go <laughs> of the total time spent putting this yep. thing together. And the majority of the time, I don't feel like doing any of it, yeah, but we yeah, do yeah. it anyway, you know, we do it anyway. And so at any level, I mean, he talks about like, you know, Oprah, like she gets a very small fraction of her day to actually be Oprah and do her thing. Right. The rest of it is just, it, it's incredible hard work and grit of, of grinding through it so that she can do those things. Um, and, and so many just think like, well, once I get to that level of success, I'm always going to be happy. And the truth is happiness is a state of mind. It's not like a thing you attain. And so being able to realize 
that that delayed gratification, the whole process is something to find joy in. Um, I mean, it's something I'm always working on. I'm getting better at it now, something I'm actively really trying to figure out because I always used to personally have the mindset of like, when I get to this thing, I'll be happy. Yep. When I get to this thing, I'll be happy. And the reality is when I get to that thing, I always want something else. Of course. You know, success oh. is the most addicting drug. And so really being able to, to, to change my state of mind to, to always be fulfilled in what I'm doing um, is something I'm always focusing on too. Yeah, to be present in the moment and just, yep. you know, sit there with my dog on the floor and be like, life is good right now. Yeah. I'm in a place where I can do this right now. Right. And, it, and it's okay. Yeah. Or, or driving my car or anything else like that. I mean, it, it really does take, it's another one of those disciplines. Yeah. It really sort of is to take and slow because there's always this kind of this under, underlying fear almost that if, if we get, if we get complacent, we'll turn into something different than what we are. We'll lose the monster right. within. Right. And, and, and we want that. We love that monster, the monster that makes us take and outperform the other folks, the monster that drives us on to do great things. We need that. And so we don't want to get too comfortable because we've seen the, the trap that comfort almost is for yeah. other people. It's a thing. Yeah, man, that is, you hit the nail on the head, dude. That is a hundred percent right. I think we all feel that sometimes of like, this is, you know, this grit, this drive is what got me here. I can't lose that. You know, I'm afraid to, to take a vacation because that's time I'm not working. But, but then on the other hand, it's like, well, what did I work so hard for? Exactly. If I can't, <laughs> if I can't yeah, take yeah. a vacation and have more control. So it's that balance of realizing you're always striving for something, but at some point there's nothing wrong with like enjoying the fruits of your labor. As long as you don't rest on your laurels, as long as it doesn't change who you are and how you are. Um, and some entrepreneurs suffer from that too. They get complacent. They stop doing the thing yep. that got them there. And I think it's at that point where, um, you know, probably in that like 150 to 200 thousand dollars a year range is is when that that can tend to happen. When you're like, all right, well, I'm making enough money now that like I have a good life, live in a nice house, drive a nice car, we take vacation, we go out to a fancy dinner when we want to, like. You're, you don't have ultimate financial freedom yet, but things are really good. That's where I think it's easy. And even I had some of that at that point until I realized like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> like we got way I, further to go and I, I continued I, to scale, but, but it, it, is, it is tempting to do that. And that's another reason why I'm so passionate about like, I mean, I, I think you and I both talked about the amount of money we spend on self-development every year on our own coaching and trips. I mean, for sure, this year I spent over six figures on business development, personal development, coaching trips. I take at least one a month. You know, I fly somewhere to meet up with other entrepreneurs because that's what keeps me going, right? I always want to be the dumbest, poorest guy in the room. And if that's the case, I'm always going to keep striving because you're around all these people that are so motivating to keep you going. But mm -hmm. again, if you're not constantly surrounding yourself with that, um, it's going to be tough to keep it going, I think. Yeah. No, it, it definitely, definitely can be, uh, can be a challenge. So let me ask you this, Rob, what do you like best about what you do, bud? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, you know, as an educator, I love helping people that want to learn mm. and seeing the value that I can add to them. There is, I mean, there's literally like no better feeling than that. Uh, as you, you know, as a teacher, and I do view myself as a teacher. You know, some people use the word coach. Like I view myself as a teacher. I'm an educator. It's the best feeling when you help someone and you see that they're actually applying it and you're, fulfill you're helping them gain a sense of fulfillment and achieve the success they want because you play a small part in that. Whether it's with the music I write and I'll get to go and work with the kids live and see and hear like the joy that they have of performing my music. Or if I'm, you know, when I'm coaching an agent and they get on our coaching call or our mastermind the next week and they say, Rob, I, I mean, this just happened recently. I host every Tuesday, I host my impossible to fail real estate mastermind at 11 a.m. Central. It's open for anyone of any brokerage is welcome to come. It's completely free. And uh, we always just talk about it's, it's member driven. They come up, they, they talk about what they need help with and I coach them through it the next week right? Matthew Wright comes on and says, Rob, I applied what you taught me. I got three new rep agreements and two new contracts that are set to close. Like, and he, and when he came to me, he had like nothing going on. 
Like that is, that's the best feeling. Like what could feel better than that, than knowing yeah. someone wants something so desperately and I'm able to play a part in helping them get what they want and get a better sense of fulfillment and add value to their life. Being able to do that every day is what keeps me going. And when I am not feeling it, which happens sometimes, oh, yeah. or, or I just kind of want to like, you know, take a break or maybe not move as fast. I really think about the people that are counting on me. That's I right. think about the students I'm coaching or the people that have purchased my earth to orbit sales course for real estate that are counting on me to put out that content and help them. I think about my family, which is my why, right? My wife and my daughter that are counting on me. And that is what keeps me going. And that's just what I love about what I do is being able to educate people that really want to learn in such a significant way. It is amazing how, when you get to the end of yourself, the things that you won't do for yourself, you will do for other people sometimes. Yeah. It's amazing the power that has and knowing when to use that tool on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a line from a book, a uh, book is called uh, Wild at Heart. I, I've always loved it. It's a men's book about being a man and doing it well. And What's it uh, called? Wild at Heart. Mm. And it's a bit of a religious book, but it's, it's done in a very, very good way. And uh, the man says in there, every man in his heart wants to be like William Wallace the guy that holds true to the end. And when they're tearing his guts out of his chest, one last shaking his fist at the man doing it. Right. Yeah. But every man fears that he's the Bruce, which mm. is the guy that saw the enemy troops when William Walls was fighting and took his troops and turned around and went home and lived the rest mm. of his life in shame. And so being up against that moment and finding those ways to take and get yourself over that hump to take and charge the horses when everybody else is, you know, getting ready to go the other way. That to me has always been what separates you. Yeah. Is, you know, being willing to make those choices that other people are unwilling, too scared, too unwilling to make. Yeah. Um, there, I remember being with, uh, I don't think, I, I, I don't think I told you this story on my podcast, but I think it's one you might appreciate. I remember yeah, I was in, in competition mode, getting ready for a competition, probably the best shape I've ever been in my life. And so mm -hmm. just finished this two hour long work because when you're just working out, you know, you train the major body parts. When you're working for competition, now you're training all these smaller bodies. I mean, oh, I had yeah. the landmine out doing core stuff, trying, I right. mean, just crazy over, at the end of whatever it was, legs or something stupid like that. So anyway, two hour workout, we finish. I say, all right, now we're going to take, we're going to do five miles. We're going to do a walk jog, kind of cool off. And at the same time, get a little bit of extra cardio on, on top of this. And so he looks at me, rolls his eyes, but we do it. So we get to the, to the very end. I got the last half mile left and, and we can see we're going, where, where mm -hmm. home is. I said, all right, we're going to sprint as hard as we can for the last, th this last little bit, this last little bit. And he looked at me and he looked me right in the eyes and he said, what is wrong with you? And I said to him, you know what? Right here is we make the, where we make the choice. 99 out of 100 people won't do this. But the fact that we're going to is what's going to earn us the right to the results that we want. We're doing what they're too afraid, what they're too tired, what they're too scared to do right here. This is the, the whole time we've been working on is to get to this point to take yep. and make that one choice that nobody else will make that we're going to make. Right. We're going to choose this. And God help. God love him. He ran and we ran and we got it done. Um it's very much about getting ourselves to that point. And those little things, like you said, doing it for somebody else, my family, the people that are depending upon me, having all those excuses, if you will, to get us the reasons to get us to do it, as opposed to the reason that everybody else has excuses not to get it done. We have reasons to push forward. And I think that's super important. Yeah. And that also, I mean, that, that story you just said is also a great illustration of that. Our actions contribute to our own self-confidence, right? Because after you did that, when you, when it would have been personally reasonable to say, <laughs> I just worked out for two hours. I just did all this cardio. I'm not going to sprint. I'll just finish. Um, you know, but when you do that, you say, I'm the kind of guy that yep. sprints the last half mile after I do this, right? This, so I've been adjusting my schedule. Usually I've been waking up at, at 5 AM and I go for a walk, but I hit the gym in the afternoon. Uh, and the reality is as I've been scaling and scaling, it's just, sometimes it just doesn't happen because stuff comes up and I, and I just can't get to the gym in the afternoon. And I'm like, well, I got my walk in in the morning and I've been, you know, mm. sometimes I get to the gym three or four days a week, which is just not enough for me. Yep. And so after listening to, to Ed Milet a lot, and also after hanging out this past weekend, so you're a real estate guy, you might know of Grant Wise and okay. Whitley, right? He's one of the yeah. best marketers out there. And uh, he's on the speaking tour and we did a 5am workout in the hotel, right? So 
we didn't get from, we drove from Dallas to Houston and we get to the hotel at like 11 o'clock at night. And he's like, Hey man, I usually work out in the morning. I'm going to, I want to be at the gym at five. There's a gym across the street. You want to train with me? And I'm like, like no but yes like let's do it and, and it would have been so easy to say like oh it's 11 and we did speaking today i gotta speak tomorrow i got all this shit i gotta do but no i'm gonna you know what let's do it and it was incredible and so now i've just reworked my schedule i wake up at 4 45 i was in the gym this morning from 5 30 uh to 6 30 did my cardio and then got home at seven and just the sh- number one i feel great but just the shift in mindset of like I'm a guy that wakes up at 4:45 and gets to the and opens the gym. That's like right. th- like that having be the first thing I do in my day now just adds such a a confidence boost and 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 just like this is the this is the type of man that I am that does these things. And so if I'm the type of man that does this, obviously I'm the type of man that does X and Y and Z and does that's that right. and then everything else becomes so much easier because that's the type of person I am because those actions have contributed to it. So every time you feel like maybe not doing something, just think like, how is this going to boost my confidence? Uh, Because now I'm the type of person that does these things. And that's going to lead to being the type of person that does other things that most people won't do. Define yourself to yourself. Those are the defining moments when you, and that's the, that's the beautiful. I mean, the day that you go to the gym first thing in the morning, and then you go out there and you speak all day and your speaking is on point. Energy is yep. great. Like you show yourself, hey, look, I can run the batteries down way below what anybody else thinks I can. And I'm still better than them bums. Right. Yep. You go in there and you just all of it. But then you get to see what you're made of. And yep. that's the that's the, that's the amazing thing about this journey of life that we're on. When you push yourself is you get to find out, hey, look, I was sure I couldn't go any further. And then I took one more step. And you know what? I was still there. I wasn't right. dead. Nothing happened. I didn't die. Yeah. 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 Right. And, and so now I know I can go even further than I thought. Well, wait a second. How far can I go? Yep. And it's great stuff, man. So what do you think makes you good at this, Rob? You know, it's, it's, I'm always just, I'm never really content. Hmm. I'm just never really content. I always, regardless of the success I achieve or, or how much I can help someone or how much money I'm making, I just always want to do better. It's kind of a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Sometimes I think more of a blessing than a curse for sure. Um, but I'm just never really content. I always want to do more and help more people and and be more successful and make more money. Um, and I'm also just really passionate about excellence in all aspects. I know you are too. And I think that's one of the reasons we get along so well, uh, even though we haven't known each other very long is because we are so driven in excellence everything I do from the way I like, from like the, 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 the way my, my counter is organized in the kitchen or, or the way my shaver is organized on my bathrooms to, to the way I, I lift, to the way I do business, to the way I write emails, it just has to be 100% excellent. And I'm, I'm just never really satisfied in that aspect. So always striving to find ways to improve and continue to achieve more success and scale more. Um, I, th- I think is really important because in that way we realize like you might be able to execute certain things perfectly, mm-hmm. certain aspects, but, but there's no such thing as achieving like perfection ultimately yep. as a person, nope. but, but in always trying to get there, you're going to keep getting better. That's it. And so, so I'm just always striving to just improve as much as I can because deep in my heart, I'm just never really content, which again, sometimes work against me because yeah, yeah. I do. And my wife is always reminding me to like, stop and smell the roses, so to speak, yeah. like think of where you've come from. It's okay to, to, to be like, wow, like, look at where I am now. Like, this is great. Like, like r- recognize the wins. Yeah, and yeah. I have a tendency to just f- focus on things I could have done better and not necessarily give myself credit for the wins. And so that's something I'm working on, but at the end of the day, really just, I'm just never content. No, <laughs> it's it's yeah. kind of what it comes down to. I, you, you, I'm going to take and tell you, I, I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. I mean, that yeah. is that, that stay in hungry is a thing. And uh, I know what the, what it looks like is I'll tell you a story. I think you'll appreciate this talking yeah. about like always looking for the, 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 the best way. So when I was a kid, my father came there, I was maybe 14, 15 years old. And he used to have the old Cadillac, the 74 Cadillac Fleetwood Brom, mm-hmm. the 26,000 foot long car. And so he always <laughs> had two keys. They had a square key for the ignition, the round key for the doors and the trunk. Right. So he took the round key off the key ring and he hands it to me and it says, hey, I brought some stuff home in the trunk. I want you to take and unload the car and do whatever with it. 
Now, in my family, it was a very big thing that when you get ever got gave anybody their keys back, you found the person, you got the key, you put it in their hand and said, hey, I'm returning the key to you because otherwise, people, did you ever return my keys to me? So you make a big deal about it. So everybody always right. remembers that they got sure. the keys back, right? So he wasn't around. So I found that he was actually, I think, in the pool or something like that. So I found his pants, I found the keys, and I put the key back in his key ring. Anyway, later on, I say, see him, I say, hey, look, by the way, the key is back on your key ring, just so you know. He says, I saw you put it on there, thank you, but you put it on the wrong way. I said, wait a second. It's next to the ignition key. It's kind of a binary choice. It's either on the key ring or off the key ring. It's clearly <laughs> on the key ring. How is right. it on the wrong way? He says to me, all the key teeth on my keys face the same direction. Mm. So with all of the self-righteous indignation of a 13, 14 year old, I say to him, why would anybody, because he's my father. So I, I mean, he's been dead for years. I'm sure he could still come kick my ass. So I got to be careful how I say this to him, right? Why would anybody care about this? He said, well, it's pretty straightforward. If it's ever dark out, I just get the teeth on one key facing the same way, the right way. And I can try every key in the lock and know that the teeth are facing the right way. I don't have to worry about trying it two different ways. Mm. And I said, that's actually quite smart. I mean, he literally invested two extra seconds when he puts a key on the key ring yeah. to take and find the best possible way to have keys on a key ring to help his future self avoid a potential problem. He was investing today in what his future self experience of using keys was going to be. And if there's one incident that like kind of points out what my experience was of my father, he had a reason for everything he did. And it was always trying to find the absolute best way to do everything. Yeah. It was amazing. Wow. It really was. And that, that obviously has, has rubbed off on you because you're, you're the same way. No, I, I b believe me, I appreciate the leg up on the brain damage there because you know, without, <laughs> God only knows it was, it was a very, very cool thing to see uh, on display. So let me ask you this. What are, what are the most important things you've learned in the process of doing what you do? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. Um, imperfect action is better than no action. Good that's, one. that's definitely one of the, one of the, King, one of one of the kings of the hill, so to speak. Uh, especially as I've done, you, you know, put a lot of effort into a lot of things that are not really related to each other. It, it's kind of funny. Like I joke with Katie, my wife. Like every time I kind of take on a new business endeavor, I'm like, great. Now I got to learn this whole brand new skill set because <laughs> I have a tendency to do that. Um, and there is, you know, th there's always that feeling of, uh, you know, fear of imperfection, fear of the unknown, uh, or, 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 or fear of, you know, trying to do something, messing up and maybe being judged Failure. or whether other yeah. people going to think, and everyone feels those things, but the difference is being able to just do it anyway. Yeah. And, and, and just realize like, Hey, I'm not really going to be good at this until I just start right. When I, I, I mean, I have a, a degree in playing trumpet, but it's not like I sounded great the first time I picked up the thing. Right. I mean, it took years. So uh, just realizing like, hey, just start moving like the, And that's one of the again, like when people ask, how have I accomplished this and that and the other? It's just I move very, very quickly. And I've embraced the fact that I'm going to not be good at something at first. And I'm OK with that because I know I can't get good at something until I just start it. So number one, you know, imperfect action for sure is better than than no action at all. Number two is absolutely the importance of having a coach the importance of having a blueprint. And again, I, I say that because the first business I launched, I was, tr I was kind of trying to emulate some, some people in the industry there. I mean, there were literally like two other people at the time when I was coming up that had really accomplished what I was trying to do. And they were both way more successful than me. Right. And like, didn't really know me very well. And the attitude of abundance is not as common in that industry. Whereas, you know, real estate, if someone wants to like, there's billions of houses, like there's plenty of business to go around. There's, there's only so many marching bands in the country, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but, but going from trying to figure that out on my own, which took, you know, the first five to six years of building that business, they were all kind of the same. I was making like 20 to 30 grand a year. Eventually I went, I had developed a good relationship with one of those people that I had so much admiration for. And I asked him a couple of questions about how he marketed himself 
to go to scale the way he did and be like one of the world authorities in this. And he actually was super kind and told me exactly what he did. And when I applied it the same exact way, within three years, I had like literally five to six X to my income and was able to quit my teaching job. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I realized like, wow, like, why did I waste so much time? Yeah. You know, and then with bodybuilding, I was just ravenously soaking in information. And, you know, I, I got to a point where I was, I got pretty fat, you know, I'm, I'm five, four. And I got to the point where I was like 210 pounds with mm. no muscle, by the way. So being five, four and 210, like nothing about that is good. Yeah, <laughs> you there's, know, there's, um, there's no way to frame that well. Yeah. No. And, uh, and so I was like, well, let me try to lose weight. So I'll just run. I guess right. that's what you do when you try to lose weight. I hated running. I got good oh, at God, it, I but I hated it. And I wasn't getting anywhere and I, I didn't achieve any kind of physique. And I always dreamed of having one, you know, growing up as a kid, you watch Arnold Schwarzenegger as, you know, you watch Lou Ferrigno as Hercules. You're like, oh man, as a young boy, like, oh, I want to look like that, yep. you know? And then eventually I found P90X, mm -hmm. Tony Horton's P90X. And I was like, that's a blueprint that I don't have to think about. I can just, and, and it was laid out so beautifully. It was like, Day one, do this workout, literally watch the video and do everything I do or try to do everything I do until you can actually do it. They had a nutrition plan. I did it twice because the first 90 days I could bear, I couldn't lift my feet up off the ground for a pull up. I couldn't even do 10 push ups. I was super weak. But after six months, I'd lost like 80 pounds and had a six pack. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, like the blueprint is amazing. And then yeah, when I works. was trying to like do bodybuilding competitions, you know, and get, how do you get down to 3% body fat? I don't know, but you know what this guy does. And I hired a coach and the weight that was lifted off of my shoulders of like, I don't have to think anymore. I just need to do exactly what this guy says. And I did. So then when I started real estate, I was like, no brainer. I'm going to hire a coach from day one. That's right. <laughs> like, I'm not going to mess around. <laughs> and that's exactly Lesson what learned. I did. <laughs> and it's no coincidence that real estate is out of the the many things I've done is the one that's scaled the quickest and paid me the most. Sure. And I'm all, I mean, now I have like three coaches that I pay for various aspects of my entrepreneurial stuff that I do. So definitely like get the blueprint, get the help combined yeah. with massive action are probably the biggest things that, that I've learned that if you, if you literally get the blueprint, apply it with massive action and just don't stop you will, it would be like scientifically impossible to lose. That's why I call my framework impossible to fail. Get the blueprint and I show you how to get the blueprint. Oh. Who do I get the blueprint from? How do I evaluate it? I give you the techniques you need to know on how to structure your day and how to apply it and set goals. And you literally just keep doing that until you win. Love it. You know, when the first part of what you're talking about, I wrote it down because I don't want to forget it because it's it's one of my, one of my favorite things to, to reference back to. Everybody wants to be brave. And, and the idea of bravery is not the absence of fear. It's action in the face of fear right. is, is such a, such a, a good one that I, I hang on to, you know, being brave is just making a choice to not let the fear paralyze me and to take and make the action that's best that's right. uh, to move forward. So good stuff, man. Um, what are you most proud of in business and in life for that matter? Hmm. You ask really good questions, man. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> That's why it's such a great podcast, man. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud that I've been able to, to, to give my family a quality of life that I never really thought was possible out of my own ruthless hard work. Um, you know, I mean, it's obviously everyone, everyone that's achieved a lot of success works hard. I didn't have a luxurious upbringing. My family was always close for very loving money was super tight, super tight growing up. Like, can I have 10 bucks to go to great adventure with my friends? No, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like, no, you can't. Um, and, and so to, to go from, from that to like, to being able to, to, to have my wife be a stay at home mom. Like she never has to work again. She loves being a mother. And I love being able to give that gift to her and to my daughter of not having my daughter to go to daycare and be raised by a stranger. Yep. And if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. I'm not discounting that at all, but that's not what I want. And, and to have, to be able to have built something, built many things that, that I provide enough financial success to live in a beautiful home in a, in a golf course community and have a great quality of life and, 
you know, buy the healthiest food and, and give amazing memories to my family and, and have my wife and my daughter be able to stay home together and grow up together, like from being a middle school teacher, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm super proud of that. I'm super proud to be able to, to have given that to my family and to know that like, it wasn't always like that. That wasn't just handed to me. I worked for that. And also that's really motivating to like, there's no freaking way we're ever going back to that. That's right, man. Like we're never going back to the old way, man. Cause again, my wife used to be a teacher also, and we never saw each other and we are blessed to have a great marriage. We love being together. And knowing that that that's never going to happen again and we're only going up from here um it, it's the best possible feeling give that to my family love it man talk about something to be proud of that's that's something worthwhile that's that's the big win yeah more than the trips or anything else that's that's the big one so that's right man when i, I mean when i'm you know like so it's uh when i remodeled my office uh, I, I flew out my, my CTO, my chief tech officer who helped me get everything set up. So it's pretty cool. We have a little rope light around the door. It's red right now. I push a little button on my desk and it's red. So the family knows like I'm recording something, you know, do not enter, but otherwise it's, all it's always off. And as long as the lights off, like to be able, you know, it's, it's one in the afternoon and I'm working and just knock, knock, knock. And there's my wife and my baby, <laughs> right. Yep. Just coming to check in or, and we can hang out all day, you know, like to be able to, to all be together all day um with your family man that's that's literally what life is about that is that is beautiful stuff man to be around the people you want to be around that's yep. good stuff so rob you're a guy that's always got uh stuff going it sounds like that if there's one thing i can i i i'm sure there's an answer to this what is next we've looked at the past we've looked at the present what's next for you what's what's next on the agendizer mm. well thank you for asking um, you know, one of the biggest things on the horizon is, is my book that I'm working on. I'm writing my first book called impossible to fail. I'm really excited for that to help get this framework that I've really perfected over the past 20 years of entrepreneurship out there to help more people. Um, I'm excited to be generating my speaking career and getting a lot more speaking opportunities because being able to, to motivate and help hungry entrepreneurs that want to learn is uh is just absolutely again the most fulfilling feeling that's that's when i'm that's when i feel most alive even this morning i went to a local real estate school to just speak to the class for a little bit about you know some things they need to know in order to be successful and also to recruit for my team and being able to just speaking i absolutely love it so writing the book generating the speaking career coming out with additional products to be able to help people um and also scaling my team to the point where it just becomes this income generating machine for everybody that's involved in blending new systems with grant wise and Whitley, um, just scaling at this point to really be at this point where I've achieved a lot of success. And now it's, it's a new experience for me to really get into that, that top, top performance, that top degree of scaling, you know, to go from the high six figures to break that seven figure barrier is really exciting and, and thrilling. Love it, man. All right. Change of pace, two questions left. You got it. What do you do to unwind? Ooh. To what let do the, I do to, to let unwind. the flowing locks down? Yeah. What do you, when you let the hair down, what is it? Yeah. What does it look like, man? Um, you know, some like usually for about 30 minutes a night, my wife and I will just sit on the couch and watch some TV. Ah. Uh, I, I, I that's the only time the TV turns on. We don't have a TV in the bedroom. Um, the bedroom is for sleeping, right? <laughs> right. I don't, I don't like having a TV in the bedroom, but, uh, my brain moves so fast. So, so fast. I need something to like something else to, to just kind of numb and just like, not just like stop thinking. Um, now that it's not super, super hot in Texas, uh, lately we'll just sit outside in the backyard. So, mm. you know, we have a nice little covered porch, a beautiful backyard, and we'll just, sit outside. And I mean, I'm perfectly content to sit outside and stare into the sky and do nothing for like 30 minutes. That is probably the best way for me to unwind. Um, and you know, sometimes, you know, someone will ask me like, do you want to go out? Do you want to go to a movie? Do you want to play a sport? And I'm like, nope, I don't, I really just want to sit outside and stare into the, the garden or just stare at the sky and just kind of let things decompress because even if I'm like, I'm eating lunch, 
and I'm sitting at the table with my family. Realistically, my brain is going at a billion oh, yeah. miles an hour. And uh, I love being outside and being in nature. Like we, we took a, our first vacation a while to Colorado Springs recently. Mm -hmm. um, and I just was so content to just sit in the Broadmoor at the pool and just stare into the mountains. I mean, I, I did that for hours. It was absolutely fantastic. So just being outside and just relaxing is, is the best way for me to kind of turn off at the end of the day. What was the, uh, the line from the movie Office Space? Yesterday I did nothing and it was everything I thought I could be. Yeah, um, yeah. Doing nothing is so sweet. Resting, look, resting with excellence is what we're going to call it. <laughs> resting with excellence, dude. That's yes. what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Figure out what rests you and do it with excellence, man. That That's everything, every part of the human interaction. We get locked in this idea that work is the only show in town. It's not. It's yeah. a piece. It is It is a crown jewel in what should be a life that is astoned with jewels. Yeah. And every one of them should be beautiful and polished and well-maintained. And that includes your own personal health and relaxation is a big part of that. Taking the, Recognizing the day that it's time to say, you know what? I'm not going to the gym today because my body is letting me know I need to not go to the gym today. Right. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, like even, even in, in bodybuilding at the gym, like you have rest periods. That's right. Like when we lift weights, we don't literally lift weights for an hour nonstop. You, you, you push yourself during a working set. And then you rest a minute or two. Yeah. And then you do it again. <laughs> right. You're actually and resting longer than you're lifting most of the time. Your sets yeah, are shorter than the actual recover. rest periods. Yeah. Because yep. the, the body, I mean, one of my favorite, um, favorite stories is they, they sent in um, industrial engineers to watch the guys shoveling coal. And one of the first things they did, because everybody used to bring their own coal shovel to shovel coal. One of the first things they did is standardize the coal shovels because they found the coal shovel that was best for actually, everybody thought they knew it was best, but mm -hmm. they had a standardized one. The other thing they figured out is if they had these guys shovel coal for 50 minutes and rest 10, they actually shoveled more coal than if they, they shoveled coal for 60 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. And so figuring out how to rest well, because at the end of the day, you're trying to get be your best performance in the time that you allocate. So, I mean, do I want to spend 60 hours at work and do 30 hours worth of work? Or would I rather spend 50 hours, but get 50 hours of solid right. work out of myself? Yep. And yep. so it's 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 doing that well, man. Figure out yep. what that it's looks really like. really interesting you said that. Something I've implemented in my, in my day pretty recently, actually, is like frequent but shorter breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, because I have a tendency to just go nonstop. And yep. inside, I feel like even if I'm resting for five minutes, I'm like, I'm dogging it. Like I should I'm be guilty, you know? You're a little guilty. Right. Yeah. But realistically, I, it really gets me feeling burnt out pretty quickly. Sure. So now I kind of structure Like I'm kind of, I'm, I'm starting to approach my day more like just the bodybuilding template to everything I do. So as an example, this morning, you know, I drove to the real estate school. I spoke there. I was on, I was a high performance and I came home. Like that was like a pretty heavy working set. Yep. Yes, so it is. like I gave myself 15 minutes and I've set a little alarm on the couch and I snoozed for 15 minutes before our podcast. And I, and I got up energized, ready to go after this, I'm going to take 30 minutes and eat lunch with the family. And then I'm going to be ready to go. And so even just sprinkling in those little, little breaks is really important just to recharge and be performing at the highest, right? When we feel in the zone in, in flow, right? You can't do that feeling burnt out. So just like you said, taking the time to just recharge, even if it's during the day, just a little bit at a time, um, really helps keep me going. I mean, it only makes sense that it would reflect in bodybuilding because bodybuilding is all about getting peak performance out of the physical aspect of the human body. Yep. What makes you think the mind is any different? Yep. I mean, it, it, you're literally, I mean, the cool thing with bodybuilding is like, you can tell when something doesn't work because you're not as strong. You don't right. grow as much. Like there's a direct correlation with our work life and our brain, man, you don't necessarily see the direct correlation. Um, but it's there. Yeah. And so, I mean, for me, I take, and I spend five, I let the dog in the office. I sometimes take my dog to the office with me. I have an English bulldog. Nice. Little boy. I haven't had a dog for years and, uh, I got, got suckered into getting one. And I, <laughs> I love the little fat. He just comes over and he, you know, he's happy as hell to see me. Hey, poor little yeah. guy doesn't know any better, I guess. And, you know, <laughs> he just comes over and five minutes on the floor and I'm ready to go for it. You know, put me in for another hundred thousand miles. I'm good to yeah. go. Yeah. And so, you know, finding those little things, but yeah. Last things, Rob, before I let you go. I mean, man, we've topped an hour. Um, where can people find you? Well, thanks for asking, Josh. So the best place to find me would be on youtube.robstein.com. Last name is S-T-E-I-N. Um, I have a bunch of cool playlists on there. I have playlists focusing on bodybuilding stuff. I have playlists focusing on the behind the scenes of writing the book. 
Uh, all of my masterminds get recorded and go up on there. So youtube.robstein.com is the best place to check it out. Uh, my podcast is going to be releasing very shortly, Impossible to Fail. And if you're a real estate agent looking to forward your career, you want to go to Orbit dot robstein.com to check out my real estate sales course earth to orbit which is literally going to give you that blueprint that's going to make it impossible to fail love it rob rob thank you again for your time and for coming to hang out with me it was amazing having you on josh absolutely man hey we, we got to hook up sometime for a workout and some food it's got to happen <laughs> let's do it let's do it